So I've been wondering about what God might be trying to tell us through this period of lockdown, uh, whether there's anything he wants to say about who he is and uh, how we should worship him. And it just seems to me that in the past, we sometimes found ourselves thinking about God as though he was a kind of glorified agony aunt, as though he's there for our benefit to help us to be truly ourselves. And God is saying, hold on, this is supposed to be about me, not about you. God is saying, I'm here. I'm in charge. Get your priorities sorted out. Worship me as Lord and as God, not as your therapist. We just love to quote that psalm that says, be still and know that I am God. And we think it means, let's have a little bit of quiet so that we can get in touch with ourselves. When what God is really trying to say is, will you just shut up? so that I can get a word in sometimes. God is saying, I'm God and you're not. If you keep behaving like you're in charge of your diaries and your programs, how are you ever going to realise that I'm supposed to be in charge of them? So maybe what God's saying is, I'm in charge. Stop it with all your organising and allow me to be responsible for you. I think probably for a people who pride themselves on being a Bible people, we've kind of got ourselves lost. I will often go to church and find instead of two Bible readings or even three, one at the beginning to call us to worship, one from the Old Testament, one from the New, I'm lucky if I get two or three verses mentioned in passing before the sermon. And so instead of having our focus on the scripture and God speaking to us from his word about who he is, we are setting the agenda ourselves from our experience. And somehow I think we've, we've got the balance wrong there. So one of the uh, other issues I've been thinking about is how we go about joining in with what God's doing in the world. Well, I've heard of ministers who, when they're called to a new church, encourage the church to shut down all their meetings except for their one main service each week. And the idea is to get the church to think about their priorities and to only reopen the ones that fit in with the vision that God's given. And this creates space for God to do new things. Now, it seems that God has gone one step further and has told us to shut down everything so that we have to really think hard about all our programmes Anything that we choose to restart will have to be renewed and lots of things will never restart. We can think afresh about our neighbourhoods and engage in mission practice that really fits. We can avoid programmes altogether and just encourage people to get on with making relationships with their neighbours. This opens all kinds of possibilities. It's a fantastic opportunity for the church to be renewed and we have to pray that God, through his Holy Spirit, will enable us to do just that. Sometimes people say to me, um, well, I'm, I'm doing things that, that help the poor. Uh, surely that's all there is to it. And I want to say, well, thank you for doing things to help the poor, because I think that's brilliant, and I'm never going to be heard to criticise it. But I, I remember uh, working in the developing world and uh, seeing people who, who dug wells and I remember thinking, okay, this is a great thing they're doing. They've dug a well in this village, but they haven't said anything about why they've dug the well. So if I was a villager here, how am I going to, to think about this? Am I going to think, okay, this is telling me that these Western people can do things that I can't? Is this, is this telling me uh, that I'm, I'm inadequate because I couldn't do this? What message am I supposed to hear from this? Yes, I've got water, I'm grateful for that, but we can't pretend that there aren't other messages being given. So 
If somebody comes along and digs a well and says, I'm doing this because I believe in a God who loves you and has asked me to express that love, that's given me a framework to understand what's happened and a positive one. So on the whole, I'd much rather people were open about the, the motivation they have for doing good than were closed about it. Because actually in the end, that's far more liberating and helpful for those on the receiving end. If you're giving because you first received, that's very different from just saying, here I am, I'm gonna solve your problems for you. Which actually can be very unliberating, even if it has supplied a wonderful source of water. Another question which has occurred is uh, how we're being asked to reimagine our life as church. And I guess this lockdown has been a reminder of what we've always known, but bluntly what we've not always acted on, is that church is disciples in relationship. Nothing more than that, really. The church might have a building, but the building should never have the church. And yet sometimes it seemed that we've got those things the wrong way around. And it's become as though the building has been our Lord rather than Christ. It's as though we're not a community, we're a, a group of people who looks after and maintains a building. And that surely can't be right. It's not that the building's wrong, it's that it's taken the wrong place in the way we think about ourselves. So, so thinking about the ways in which we might reorganize ourselves. I, I don't think that we can go wrong if we focus on the three great themes of church, community life, worship and mission. I think if we organize our, our programs around those things we won't go too far wrong. It's not that you can't add other things in but most things that are important can find their place within one of those three great things. Lots of you will know that I'm borrowing from Robert Warren here. But the, the, all these things have to emerge from our relationship with Christ. And that finds expression in our shared community life, in our worship of the triune God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and in our engagement with the world, which is our mission. And these things can, can find expression in all kinds of different ways. There's no right and wrong way to be community. There's different ways in which we can have authentic worship of the true God. And there are lots of different ways in which we can engage in mission. And the ones that are right in my context might not be right in yours. So it's not a case of me saying you have to do it this way or you have to do it that. The idea is that prayerfully before God and in community we work out the most effective ways and the most helpful ways to do these things where we are given who we are. So for example, if the community that you're part of is a large one, you're going to worship in a different way from uh, somebody who belongs in a community of a handful of people. It's not that one is good and one is bad, it's that both can be authentic provided they're done responsibly before God. And the same applies to how you go about worshipping and the kind of mission that you engage in. So what the present crisis offers us is an opportunity to be prayerful about the way, what we do when we re-emerge. And I think if all of us think carefully about how we're going to express our community life in the future, uh, how we're going to worship in the future and how we're going to engage in mission in the future, we can begin in a renewed way, guided and inspired by God's Holy Spirit. Rather than thinking we have to restart what we were doing in the past, we can do God's new thing. I've, I've always believed, and I continue to believe, um, that God has a purpose for his Baptist people in all the world and in the UK. I believe this because I think, uh, not that I necessarily think that we're better than anybody else, 
but because the, the way of doing church, which we represent, has a fantastic and important contribution to make to the church in the land as a whole. And I would go as far as to call it prophetic. Too often we feel like whatever it is God's called me to is the most important thing. And anybody who's doing something else is a slightly lesser being. Uh, so I might say, I'm a pioneer. Pioneering is what God's all about at the moment. Anybody who's settled for any other sort of ministry is an adequate. Or I might say, well, I'm in a proper church doing things the way they're supposed to be done. And, you know, we're generating the funds we need for my ministry and for lots of other ministries. And all those pioneers down the road, all they're doing is, is, is spending money. Um, and what we, we need to do is to trust one another and to believe that God is calling a variety of people into ministry and into church life who have different gifts and all these are God's priority. I, don't, I try hard not to sit in the college in my pleasant office and think, well, I'm training the next generation of leaders, therefore I'm very significant. I'm, I try to sit here and say, how can I best serve all the things that God is doing through his people at the moment? How can I serve the pioneers? How can I serve the pastor teachers? How can I serve the chaplains? How can I serve the missionaries? How can I serve the next generation of theological teachers? And if we all thought, how can we serve the different things that God is doing? I'm not saying that I'm the best example of that always, but I, it's what I aspire to be. If we all aspired that way, perhaps we find ourselves supporting each other and feeling like we were all on one team rather than we're actually trying to compete with each other.